use the next two in one saline nasal spray. Spray the bike. With an innovative power jet to break through your toughest congestion. <laughs> Come on, man. Congestion? No, I'm good. Spray goodbye to tough congestion. Two-in-one saline nasal spray has arrived. With a gentle mist and innovative power jet, spray goodbye to congestion. It's comeback season. Say for one day, next day it goes into hot. But I'm here. Top feeling Monday, Tuesday, your touring is stock. But I'm here. That's Shirley MacLaine putting her unique stamp on a Sondheim classic in the 1990 film Postcards from the Edge. This morning, the irrepressible screen icon is in conversation with our Lee Cowan. And that's my grandmother. At 90 years old. Here I'm just trying to be coy on purpose. Jesus, what a jerk. <laughs> the veteran actor and Oscar winner Shirley MacLaine was in a spicy mood. We're the nude ones. <laughs> laid bare before us were moments in her long career, captured mostly in black and white. Oh, there I wanted to see how my legs photographed. <laughs> well, they photographed well. Well, I was born with good legs. When you leave with your legs, a little bit of flirting is likely in the offing. You look just like George Clooney just then. Oh, really? Whoa. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody never been this to me before, baby. And you're sober, too. <laughs> Yeah. Shirley McLean always had a seductive spark. Watch your step. Go ahead and watch your hands, Mr. Kirkby. A pixie-haired triple threat. If they could see me now, alone with Mr. B. Singer, dancer, and actor. Electric eels, I might add, do it. Though it shocks them, I know. She could turn just about every well-known head in Hollywood. And then some. Martin was the funniest person I ever met. Hey, give me a little kiss. How about it, huh? Some no ideas. He's uh, you wait yeah. right there and I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> she sort of had a crush on but he said nothing ever knew. Mm -hmm. I sort of was afraid if I got that close. Oh, uh, Mr. Knight. He would be that funny. Oh, yeah? And I think the humor meant more to me. Her picture of that love not to be, along with hundreds of others, from fellow rat packers to politicians, once adorned McLean's home in Santa Fe. She called it her role of life. I just started filling an empty wall and loved it. She just finished organizing that wall of life into sort of a captioned memoir. Look at my hair. Long red curls. It starts where she did, growing up in Virginia, the daughter of two educators, and that's Ian Warren, right? That's an yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, the older sister of would-be actor and Oscar-winning director, Warren Baker. He was a little baby butt. <laughs> and I took care of him and watched out for him. While Warren Beatty waited until college to go into acting, Shirley changed her last name to her middle name and danced her way to New York even before graduating from high school. They were my teachers, my beloved teachers. She credits everything to those two teachers who offered a bit of prophetic advice. I remember the day they sat me down and told me that I had too much expression in my dancing. I might want to think about acting. As the story goes, McLean was cast as the understudy in the original Broadway production of The Pajama Game. When the star, Carol Haney, injured her ankle, McLean was thrown on stage. I never had a rehearsal. Not what? That, no. And you went on with how much notice? Five minutes. She nailed it. Or at least Alfred Hitchcock thought she did. He cast her in his next film. What did I tell you, Mommy? Touch it, Arnie. It was her first film. She'd have lunch with Hitchcock almost every day. I had these huge Hitchcock and meals. <laughs> and makeup and hair came to me and said, Look, you're going to gain weight. And I did. I gained 25 pounds. She says producer Hal Wallace had an appetite for her talent, too. And maybe a bit more. As she remembers it, he greeted her at that famous gate on the Paramount lot on her very first day. 
he walked out of his office and then walked toward my car. I rolled down the window. He leaned in and put his tongue down my throat. He later gave her a sports coat, but not an apology. What a jerk. <laughs> McLean was newly married at the time, the only man she ever met. Businessman Steve Parker. Love of my life. They soon had a dog. Isn't she adorable? Really? Sashi Parker. We're in Hong Kong, I think. Her parents had a famously open marriage. McLean spent most of her time in New York and Hollywood, while Parker and her daughter lived mostly in Japan. You were sort of an unconventional mom. Yeah. An unconventional wife, too, I guess, yeah? Yes. Her past affairs, if you can call them that, were hardly secret. She's been pretty open about almost all of them. I don't think I was that attractive. You really don't? No. So for a while, I think, oh, God, I'm not sexy, attractive. Hmm. But then I have my relationships, and hmm. they do think so. And she was just as open about those she'd never been with. Controlling <laughs> the universe! Like Jack Nicholson. I'm not enjoying this! Oh, isn't that great? It was amazing. <laughs> he wanted to get me on my back. He just had to ask me. When she won her Oscar for that role in terms of endearment, she brought him up before her co-star, Deborah Wing. I have wanted to work with the comic chemistry of Jeff Nicholson since his chicken salad sandwich scene in Easy Pizza. Nicholson couldn't keep a straight face. And to have him in bed with such middle-aged joy. She never stopped inhabiting memorable characters. I'm not crazy, Malin. I've just been in a very bad mood for 40 years. She found roles that suited her and her age. Remember my 17th birthday party when you lifted your skirt up in front of all the I people? I did not lift my skirt. It's world up! She was in her late 70s when she joined the cast of Downton Abbey. Every night. You know, I read about you in the American newspapers. Gossip, really nothing to worry about. And she was in her 80s when she appeared on Hulu's Only Murders in the Building. A cocoa tin has coconut. That looks like a cup of canal water. For someone who famously claims to have lived several past lives, photos of her current life sure make it look spectacular. No wonder she believes people have come back from the beyond to talk with her about it. Like Cecil B. DeMille. He died almost 40 years before McLean received the Lifetime Achievement Award that was named after him. I'm going to take this award home, and of course I will be speaking directly to Mr. DeMille later. McLean still lives in Santa Fe. She fits here. I love the old antique. It's still here. Yeah. Myself. Uh, <laughs> She's well aware time is running out to satisfy all her curiosities. You're very open about saying you're not afraid of dying. And you're, oh no, I'm kind of interested in going there. To see if you're right about all the stuff you're doing? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to being part of the heaven experience. I really am. And I'm here! But for now, at least, Shirley McClough isn't going in. I'm still. <laughs> see you tomorrow. We love you. We'll see you here on The Family Deal. Joe, until next time, this is Peter Tumarkin on behalf of the Focati Rug saying thanks for pressing your luck. Bye-bye. So anyway, we have just 10 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. So long. Bye-bye. Yeah. We got we, five seconds. Oh, no. We have three. Two, one. Bye. Bye.